For the last 10 years, Catherine Lyle has been working with men in um, erectile dysfunction, ED and porn addiction. Having spoken to over 25,000 men in these 10 years, Catherine's research shows that we're losing much more than our men's attention. Catherine says that, and in her research, that watching porn even once a week creates an addiction, and that addiction is like heroin on their brains. Catherine, thank you so much for joining us on You First today. It's been a long journey for me to get you in the studio, so <laughs> I'm very, very happy to get to get you here. Catherine's also released a book uh, in 2021 called The Uncensored Threat. So if you want to look that up and, and get some more research. Catherine, what's happening to our men and to our boys? So it's... It's the pandemic before the pandemic and it's been declared a global health crisis by the police and the GPs and you know when that's happening that it's a fairly serious issue. Um, it's it's a global problem and uh, my research came back 97% of men are watching porn regularly. Uh, which 97%? 97%. Okay, I knew of, it was a lot. Yeah, of the men surveyed. And these were men from LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. These weren't my clients. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a global research study that's been running since 2018. So it came back that we're watching it regularly. Now, this is where the you know, the grey area gets because what you call an addiction and what I call it an addiction are two different things. And when it comes to porn addiction, men don't actually um, acknowledge that it is a thing. Uh, most of the research um, when it was released, the guys were like, how is porn addiction a thing? Is that even a thing? Mm. Even when I was on the dating scenes, I told them what I did and they, were, they would laugh and say, how is that a, a thing? Uh, so, you know, we, we avoid using the word addict or addiction when it comes to porn because it's the word regularly that is, is the, the clincher. So once a month or more is considered a porn addiction and it's on the, on the bottom end of the scale, but we still look at it because if they're watching porn once a month and masturbating once a month, then they absolutely hands down have a porn addiction. Hands down. The, yep. Don't mind the pun there. Yep. There's plenty of puns okay. you're going to hear today. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so porn addiction. What what hap like what makes this so terrible? Yes. What makes it so terrible that our boys and our men are watching? So the the thing that people don't understand is what is a porn addiction um, other than, you know, watching porn. So when we study the science of it, it's it's an addiction to the brain chemicals. It's not an addiction to boobs and ass. Uh, it's a, a, a neural addiction. It's not a sex addiction. Mm -hmm. uh, sex addiction that I've treated has always been a porn addiction that's turned into something else. Um, porn always comes first normally out of all the addictions as well. The, the kids have been exposed to it first before drugs and alcohol normally. Um, so a porn addiction is when you watch porn and the brain creates a whole lot of chemicals and hormones that um, you know stimulates the brain, stimulates the body. You get the limbic system activating, so you've got hairs on the back of your neck and you're feeling the tingles and the. So you it know, feels good. Like yeah, the, absolutely. There's endorphins that are produced, so you know you feel good. There's the serotonin, which is the well-being chemicals. You've got the dopamine, which is the um, you know the exciting kind of um, what we call a novelty drug. I like what I see and I want to see more of it. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the oxytocin which is the bonding hormone uh, and this is this is all produced in really high levels and so men are bonding to the act they're bonding to the porn they're watching um, they're getting excitement out of it the body feels amazing and if you had watched porn all your life but never masturbated with it then that's a completely different um you wouldn't be as addicted it's the coupling of the chemicals and the pleasure together that creates the addiction okay so just to we're talking to Catherine Lyle Catherine Lyle's been working with men around porn addiction for over a decade so I just want to remind you that if you have little children's little children or if this is a delicate subject we want you to listen you might want to do catch up with us so Catherine, what I'm just hearing there is it's the coupling of what's happening in our brain and the physical act of the pleasuring. Yes. This is where it's the joining of the two yep. that is making it the, – that's what's creating the addiction? Correct. Well, the brain cannot function under that level of – 
hormones and chemicals, just like a cocaine um, addiction. So when you take cocaine, and we, it is exactly the same as a drug addiction, so mm-hmm. that's why we mm. replace the word porn with heroin to, for guys to get their head around this. And so when the brain produces all these chemicals and hormones, it cannot survive in that state, so it has to change itself. When it changes itself, it then adapts, and then when it starts to come down, just like you do from a drug addiction, um, it's like coming down off crack. People get antsy and, and stressed and mm-hmm. irritated and they can't make decisions and they can't focus until the next hit or the next hit of porn and chemicals. So porn isn't the problem necessarily. It is the chemicals that are being producing produced in the brain because when you set that standard, the brain then changes itself and you have to uh, give the brain the same level of chemicals and it changes itself so it gets higher and higher and higher. Uh, the stimulus gets higher. The dopamine receptors get worn out. So there's, you know, the porn that you watched, you know, when you were 17 versus what you need to watch now to actually be stimulated is completely different. So when the brain changes itself, it gets addicted to the chemicals and, and hormones and you have to keep feeding it. And so that's the addiction. So this, we were, we were talking before in a, in a very different sense around adaptation. So mm-hmm. we're adapting, so we need to add, so what's happening is we need to add more. Yep. So it's more and it's different types of. Yes. So... Catherine, like this is like chasing down mm-hmm. down a ladder of doom is what it feels like. Like, yeah. And the other thing is, is that this drug is mm-hmm. so readily available. Mm-hmm. It's available in our hand yep. at any given time. Is yes. that correct? Yes. Yep. And I got shown psychically years ago the greyhound race. So it's that little white rabbit that isn't real, and everyone and the dogs are chasing it, um, and they're not meant to catch it, and the and the and it's not real. But they don't know that they're trained to to chase this mm. rabbit, and that's what I got shown around porn addiction. Is these guys are running on um, addictive chemicals and hormones, not realizing, thinking that they're you know. Um, feeling alive and, you know, wanting sex and, and all of this stuff when it's actually the chemical addiction that's running the show. It's nothing to do with sexual energy, kundalini energy, organic sexual energy, you know, and then they're turning to their partners and expecting that same kind of hit from from sex and intimacy and connection and they're not getting it. And you never will. You'll never, ever get the same hit. But we teach men how to have um, better communication, better open, um, you know, commitments and connection to their partner but also i teach them all the energy work the breath work the edging the energy all right, work so hang on let, let's just backtrack yeah. because where you're going is a place i love yeah so i do want to get there so Catherine, our men have a creating addictions mm-hmm. through what they 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 feel there may not be any alcohol in there yep. there may not be any yep. drugs in there there may not be no any gambling in there yet this that is seen as and and I've also been on the dating scene as an adult mm-hmm. and some of the men it's one of the first questions I ask or I drill down pretty quickly mm-hmm. is it how to, and I don't say do you watch porn because invariably you get no 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 in the yeah. early days so I will say mm-hmm. what type of porn yeah and and that's and how often yes and mm-hmm. how often with a non-judgmental voice that's there but it's I'm mm. I'm digging for the information because the other effect is for women and this is what this program's about we're speaking to women mm-hmm. is that a relation being in relationship with a man that has a porn addiction means for us we don't have the connection correct it's impossible for a man to have a connection with their partner on the level at which uh, we are born to do, which is the energy, um, the energy, the breath work, a feeling like you're leaving your body, not understanding whether your head's up or down in terms of, let's say, positions and what men focus on. Um, it's about you know connection through kissing and energy work without even intercourse, and you are on a different planet. You don't know what's going on. You're leaving your body. This is the connection stuff, and this is how sex is meant to be. Um, but you know, men are incapable of that if they're watching porn. A hundred percent. I mean, I, I'm an energy worker. I can put someone in front of me, and I can feel how high their energy level is. Their chi, their life force energy. I work with Kundalini. But we can even even without that, Catherine. I, I'm going to say, being with a partner, mm. that that 
was using porn, which mm. I didn't know about, mm. that that I can feel that as well. Like yeah. I know that it, it's not working. And then what happens being the partner, and so for you listening um, at home or, you know, out walking or wherever you are today listening back to this, is I felt gaslit yeah. because I was being told that was my problem Mm -hmm. that so talk to us about what happens for the woman so there's uh the number one cause of ed is porn and it's been about 98 percent of the clients that i've treated i've treated about five thousand clients not all of them were for porn addiction i haven't always uh, advertised that i've specialized in this i work very heavily in mental health depression anxiety and so men would come in and um you know talk about their ed and talk about their anxiety but they didn't want to talk about the porn um so it's it's the number one cause now women blame themselves hands down there's the pun again every single time when there's erectile dysfunction it's a subconscious thing that we think that they're not turned on by us by us or that there's something we're not doing and then therefore it's our fault Catherine I will also say on that and again as a in the past a woman on the dating scene is that they come into into the new relationship Mm. knowing that there's ED and then it's and they don't say anything they don't say anything and I know for myself it was okay well what's happening here like this mm. is this is not and then there's all these stories around there you know there's mm. well, it could be the alcohol that I had it could be this it could be that it yeah. could be that yeah they they will often they're not blaming the woman uh but the woman's blaming herself and they're not saying anything so therefore they're they're enabling that situation Mm. um you know i'm trying to teach especially the single men to actually go in with a with an open communication uh conversation first before they even you know the clothes come off so that there's that um that warning to women that you know and and i know lots of men that i treat they they have those conversations eventually after working with me but the women are still blaming themselves still thinking it's them um and looking for that's their belief system and so they're not actually believing the men when they actually say it either so this is why we're working with women more now to educate them around how how to go about this that it's not their fault um it's got nothing to do with them um i've had plenty of conversations with men unfortunate conversations where you know they've come in and blamed the women to me and said you know she was ugly i couldn't get it up and I'm and I'm like I have to drop all of my judgments and oh. as a woman and and just take a deep breath and say hang on a second <laughs> actually you know how much porn are you watching and it's oh it's only every day it's only once a day I'm like yeah. well that's what it is and then we look at how old they are and how old they were when they first saw porn and you know some of them they're 50 60 year old porn addictions you know um, these men are in their 80s and 70s and they're still refusing to believe <laughs> that this is a is a thing so yeah Catherine, the gaslight Lighting is a thing. Let's have a look at just before we go to the song that you've chosen oh, for yes. us. <laughs> let's have a look at for a woman that's going either into a relationship or a woman that is in a relationship where there is, um, you know, you're thinking maybe that there's some porn going on, um, some porn watching, or maybe there's a little bit of um, ED, so erectile dis- dysfunction. What a, like what what can she look out for? How can she broach the subject? How can she educate herself? Like, can we share with our listeners what what can we do as women and filling our own cup first? Yes. So we have um, there's a guide on my website that men can look at, and it's also very useful for women on how to tell your partner you have a porn addiction. And that was created by myself and another practitioner, male practitioner who who treats men but he had a porn addiction and we sat on the couch trying to work out the most safest um, open conversation that we could have about that and it's got some tips in there for the men and also the women because unfortunately when I do the work with the men and they then tell their partners or tell women it's not received well uh obviously it feels like betrayal uh there's more to it than just the porn it feels like a lie and therefore what else are you lying about and i didn't know about this and you know so there's there's a lot of kind of um aspects to to this conversation but the women uh i engage i i I encourage them to engage on the dating site before you even meet someone have a conversation about it um you know so many people men and women approach me and say you know the second 
sex life was really bad and this was really bad and the relationship's really bad. And I say, well, go back to when you first met. Did you talk about any of this to begin with? No. And so communication is the number one thing around this. Um, and, and discovering and deciding as a woman before you go into those conversations, what are your standards? What are you accept? What are you accepting? Do you know what porn addiction is? And do you know the effects of it? The mental effects, the brain damage, like all oh, of the things. I think that, that's really key. So yeah. for number one for a woman is to educate ourselves. Mm-hmm. So I'll speak to the the women that are on the dating dating scene that are listening here. Please educate yourself. Yep. So Catherine's website, and we'll give that to you. Mm-hmm. Um, after the next break, Catherine's website will give you an understanding of what a porn addiction is and how it presents. Mm -hmm. And then also for you to understand around your, your part in this. And if you choose to go into a relationship with someone that that truly is an addict. Correct. I mean, I, I was single for 14 years and I refused because of the work that I did. You know, I was on the dating scene before I did this work. And so in hindsight, I look back and see all of these men okay. Now I understand there's the signs there. Um, there's other signs apart from ED, um, distraction, not being able to focus. Um, typical ADHD symptoms are the symptoms of, of a porn addict. Um, not being able to make decisions. Um uh, it's all the brain damage at the frontal lobe, which is mental health. So uh, depression, anxiety, anxiety, you very rarely meet someone that uh, has, doesn't have anxiety, that has a porn addiction, mm. even if they haven't identified it. Um, so, you, so what you were talking then, Catherine, mm-hmm. is around the frontal lobe. Correct. So this is this executive decision making and, and rational thought. Yeah. So so yeah, yeah, it's, it's your a key it's one the to control look out panel of your personality as well. So a lot of men uh, that are aware of their porn addiction will approach me because they feel like there's a lot of shame and there's a lot yes. of um, I'm a bad person and I can't stop and you know this type of thing and th- and that's because it has become part of their identity because it does affect that part of the brain. Um, you know, controlling sexual behaviours also part comes from the frontal lobe. So porn addiction normally, if not every time, turns into something else if they don't stop it. All right. So, Catherine, you, where you, you, blah, blah, my words are going because I've got so many questions for you. You are listening to You First. It's a show about fitting your own oxygen mask on. We've brought you today Catherine Lyle. Catherine Lyle's worked with men for over a decade and particularly in the space of porn addiction, understanding what porn addiction is and then also how to treat porn addiction. Um, Catherine was saying just then that that the symptoms of the addiction often present like ADHD. Catherine, we'll come back after this track and we'll share with you treatment. So this is not a lost cause. Yep. So treatment, how to get treatment, how to find, have the knowledge, where to go and what to do. Tell us about this track, Kathst. We are talking to Catherine Lyle. I do want to let you know if you've got little gentle ears, we're we're dealing with some delicate subjects here. So if you have young children or sensitive at the moment, I promise you, you will want to listen to what Catherine's talking about, but maybe later on a catch up might be better or pop your headphones in. So Catherine Lyle has worked with men over the last 10 years, over 25,000 men. She's also written a book called The Uncensored Threat. Today we are talking about porn addiction and erectile dysfunction that we will refer to as ED throughout our conversation here. Catherine was talking about the negative effects and how the addiction causes the chemical changes in the brain and it's it's it's, it's like heroin in the brain of an of a porn addict and a porn addict is somebody that potentially is watching porn once a day once a month or more once a month or more is is what is what it is Catherine we've had some messages come through on the um, on SMS and they're saying if we have a partner or when we have a partner that comes to us and says, you know, I, I, I watch porn, I'm, how do we as women, so how do we hold that space mm-hmm. and not feel betrayed? Yeah, so 
my advice to women because of the men's work that I've done and because I've seen this go pear-shaped way too many times, it is the number one best-kept secret in the world. So I've asked every single client that I've spoken to, 5,000, over 5,000 men, have you told your partner? Um, occasionally they'll say, yeah, she knows I watch porn and I say, she told have you told her exactly what you just told me the frequency what you're watching what time of the day where so work in the car all of that in the toilet and the answer is no 100 percent would say no yeah so it's the best kept secret in terms of addiction um and so when uh we want the women to be in receiving mode in terms of education information and and acknowledgements from the men because and, and in order to do that, the men need to feel safe. Now, we just we, we want to um, hold the men accountable, but we also need to let them off the hook a little bit because the brain is ruling the the show. And this is an addiction. They can't so stop. The same if it was an alcohol, a gambling, exactly the same. a drug. Yep. This is they can't addiction. just choose to stop um, because you're upset or because you don't want them to. They can't even choose to stop because they want to a lot of the time. So um, we have to uh, put that disclaimer out there to women because I am a woman and I know how heartbreaking this can be if you've been together with someone for 20, 30 mm. years and they admit mm. after doing work with me that they've had this, you know, they've been watching porn every day for your whole entire relationship. It's a betrayal. Um and you know we're also the thought of for some women it's okay uh and then I'd question why is it okay uh there's a lot of enabling going on society enables it we you know that's what boys do that's what men do um that's where they get their sex education from um well, that's you know, it's, it's it's how you spice up a relationship like it's it's there's a lot of you know coaches and, and Justifi- associations justifying. justifying it um and enabling it and it's causing major problems in the body so So we have to, as women, be open to any secrets that are being shared with us in a way that doesn't further trigger the man or the person who is, you know, admitting these things because they don't feel safe because they would have told you already probably. They don't want the confrontation. They don't want the... um, the psychopathic, you know, tendencies to come back at them is what they'll say. Um, that's you know, not – I just want to just put no, a caveat that's on not, that. That's not our, our language. Oh, that, yes. That's what women will hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what the men are, are saying. Um, the You know, she's a bit of a psycho sometimes. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you're in the wrong relationship for starters. You know, that's Well, that's he's in the wrong other. relationship with himself, yeah. Catherine, because yes. of his addiction. Yes. So – yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people that are suffering mental health issues that aren't, you know, doing the work and addressing. So, 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 it's, so he's. So let's go to this position here. So he has shared. He's realised it is an addiction. He goes to her. He tells her he's got addiction. So what we're yep. saying to her is to be able to hold the space. Hold space. Hold space. Yeah. Now. In that there, mm-hmm. it's great. He's offloaded it. Yep. He's just told us, I've got an addiction. Yes. Ta-da, all yep. sorted. Yeah, and that's how they often feel is it's what's done. What's next? Yeah, so what's next is um, uh, take a time out, I would recommend, uh, but make sure you come back. So just say, I'm going to just process what you've told me because sitting there in front of the person, there there's a lot of expectations on how you're meant to act. Um, you might feel a lot of anger and betrayal and a whole lot of emotions coming up and you don't even know what it is or you might be like, well, what does that even mean? So mm. there's confusion or you know, uh, there's no education and you don't even know what that means and he probably doesn't know what it means either. So mm. um, you know, it's really important that you take that time go and have a shower but state that you're coming back it's really important when you leave a a discussion that you say I just need five minutes I'm going to come back in a minute don't go on your phone don't contact your best friend don't say oh my god I've just been told this it's private information that's easy to do Catherine because this this is so big how do we contain it ourselves yeah and I know with my relationship with Jane there's times when and I'm very grown up at times, Jane. Jane's still in the studio where I go, no, I'm going to sort this one out myself. But I will often <laughs> mm. go, I spill. I want to spill it over because I can't actually hold it myself. Yes, exactly. And you can do that eventually because that's what women do, yeah? But in that moment, in, in on that day, it's really important that you um, allow him to – reveal how he's feeling what it's doing to him why he's telling you that type of thing so having 
my number one um, answer for communication when you feel threatened or unsafe or unless you're being abused in a in a conversation is ask a question it mm. changes the energy it shifts the energy for you it it puts you in the inquirer mode instead of on the defense um you can tell him how it's made you feel um, but in a calm way i'm really really angry i just i don't even know what to do with this information um you know my body's feeling all weird i feel like you've cheated on me you know you can stay all of those things but you've got to keep calm um, and then ask him what he's going to do about it and that's that's the important part and if they don't know what to do about it then you know I have a um, so Catherine on that there was that was one of the other messages yes. that just came through on our text line so if you're listening live and you would like to connect with us on our text line I'm going to get you to call 0412-987-987. That's not a call, that's an SMS. Yes, beautiful. So the question on our text line is, can the relationship be recovered? It absolutely can, but without the honesty. Uh, I mean, it's probably going on without you knowing anyway. And so it's like, are you better off not knowing or better off knowing? And that's the question you have to ask yourself. When they do tell you, um, it's important that, that, you know, there are next steps because that you can't recover from that. I would also recommend that the woman get some kind of therapy or healing around this um, to understand how it's affecting her so that she can um, deal with any triggers, even from the past. There might have been past relationships, past abuse, um, um, you know, ask any woman and she's had some uh, very unsafe or unsavory situations mm. when it comes to sexuality, the way she's been treated, um, you know, slapped and, you know, spat on and hair pulled and, and things like that. And that all comes from wow. porn culture. Yes, yes. Yeah. Indeed, what they're watching and they think is – and even anatomically how mm. we – how, yep. you know, a woman is to look and exactly. that's a whole other that's discussion. Whole other we might take that one off air. Yeah, so it's, um, it's important to just hold space – for yourself and for him and then you know go off and cry and go off and get your healing and go and speak to your psychologist or your healer or you know me I treat women as well I treat couples where we're working on this on a uh, from a 360 point of view, um, even the children as well. So it's really important. Um, you know, I mean, my biggest question is when it comes to kids and teens is how do you as a father teach your children about this as a, as an addiction that is exactly the same as a drug addiction? How do you teach them that when you're under the influence of porn yourself? Um, you know, and if the woman is flying blind and she doesn't understand or know that you're watching porn, she doesn't know anything about porn, then how do you parent your children around this um and you need to start at a really early age uh age appropriate but you know the kids are getting access to porn out five to eight years old that's what we're saying and that's what you're saying yeah yeah so Catherine um Jane's um on the um in the studio with us now we're both mothers of boys mm -hmm. so we've been talking predominantly about being in an intimate relationship with a partner or a potential partner if we're dating yes. but we're mother of mothers of boys mm -hmm. So this also pertains to what we choose to share now that we've got this knowledge. Yes. So what my first uh, book was aimed at parents and teachers and coaches and, you know, anyone that's uh, sports clubs and things like that uh, because – there was an ebook before that and that was just for the men and it's like but hang on a second if if the everyone else around the men doesn't understand this then the, the mm. men are isolated yes both in a good way and a sneaky way uh the dopamine addiction is also from keeping it a secret and so when we bring it out into the open it's really important um so this first book is aimed at them it has a note at the start in terms of how you actually talk to your kids about this it's for kids uh from the age of 14 plus can actually read the ebook and then from anyone under that age you read the ebook and then you deliver that information in an age appropriate thank you. manner thank you so yeah. that's on your website Catherine. yes yep what's yep. your website it's integratedmenshealth.com.au fantastic so yep. integratedmenshealth.com.au mm -hmm. under resources um it's under there's a tab called porn and sexual health beautiful yeah Jane, you've got some questions. I can see you bubbling away there. I just want to jump in and say, so I had a discussion with one of my sons. He was probably around the age of 16 and I brought this topic up and bless him. He goes, oh, mum, I've dealt with it already. I'm like, 
<laughs> oh, okay. And he goes, yeah, I, I've decided that it doesn't make me feel good mm-hmm. when I'm watching it mm-hmm. and it never looks like the woman is having a good time. That's amazing. Like, You're amazing. He goes, so my mate, they been talking about it together he said we've both decided we're not going to watch it anymore that's amazing great Uh, end of discussion (laughs) okay cool (laughs) yeah it is amazing um unfortunately by 16 most kids have watched porn or seen it the stats came back 97 percent of boys and this is a global um, study had seen porn 50 percent of those are watching it every day already at the eight by the time of 18 and can i just say he also told me that a lot of girls in yes his year were watching it as yeah. well we're seeing that, that surprise me we're seeing that come through um very much so that mm. these generations since the smartphone um mm. that are growing up with it in their pockets it's just becomes the norm mm. um and unfortunately we're finding that um you know child on child sexual assault is happening it's 400 percent. it's up 400 percent, and that was a stat from years ago mm. um the courts are overwhelmed with all of the reports and they're the ones that are reported mm. um there's lots of you know their brains are still developing until the age yeah. of 27 so if you're going to introduce any kind of addiction including gaming gaming also mm. kind of goes alongside porn addiction um because of the dopamine hits that they're getting mm. and so kids at the age of 16 are already you know seeing it knowing it um we're seeing lots of reports from gps from you know girls that have had um genital or you know uh, other types of Mm. wounds that we won't mention on radio so Catherine, this is a much much bigger topic than sort of like i don't want to know about this this is this doesn't relate to me i've been in a long-term relationship it's it's nothing Mm -hmm. Just the thought that Jane, you and I have boys and that Mm. discussion that you had with one of your boys and then you've also said that girls are as well. How do we get, how do we find you? Mm -hmm. Who's doing this work to support? Who's doing... The, tell us about the resources, how we can get to you. Sure. So there's a lot of people going into schools now doing uh, some great work around consent and boundaries. Um, and, you know, I kind of talk to those people, but a lot of them are just academics. They're not doing the work. They're not practitioners. They're not working with the hands-on stuff. Um, you know, the brain, the mental health, the energy, all of the, um, you know, the – I'm a kinesiologist, so I'm working with, you know, stuck emotions in the body. Mm -hmm. And um, and so I can't treat teens unless there's a parental, um, you know, acknowledgement, which can absolutely happen if the kids – they don't even have to admit what's happening to the parents because they won't. They won't want to talk about it a lot of the time. And so – it's just that, you know, they need to see me for gaming addiction is normally what I see young boys for. Okay, and then, so if there's gaming, then there's yep. very much likely. Yep. And then we get the parents in on the first session, whether it's in person or on Zoom, um, for the first kind of half an hour. And then we ask permission, does the kid feel okay? Does the adult feel okay? Are we all okay to now take it over to me? And then that's when I start talking to the child about pornography what it does you know Mm, and then eventually asking them because when you first ask them they'll say oh yeah I've seen it and then you know by the end of the session it's actually I'm watching it every day and Mm. what you're telling me is scaring me about 60 percent of the the people that contact me on Instagram in in DMs are under the age of uh, are under 18 most of them are around 13 and I didn't know when they first contacted me that these were kids um, because they were talking about erections and and ED and um, porn addiction and so I've learnt straight up I ask people where are you located and how old are you you? because I can't treat them Um, but I'm the only port of call for them I mean you know what are we going to do Right. Where do we find – so the resources that you have on your website, mm-hmm. integratedmenshealth.com.au, yes. so please jot that down. Yep. You've got e-books. You've also got the ability to purchase or a link through to The Uncensored Threat, your Correct. published book. Mm-hmm. You've also got a two-week challenge coming up as well. Yep, so the two-week challenge could run at any time. It's just called that and it's a um, self-pleasure challenge for men to work out – Uh, where they're at with this and so they're asked to self-pleasure without watching porn and they'll start to see you know the ed and the the problems with mental capacity and making decisions and there's a tracking sheet that comes with it there's a checklist that comes with it and so we're starting to teach them in a in a in a mini program on you know what to do themselves brilliant 
um, 30 day program. And then you've also got, you are seeing clients in clinic yes. in, in Karam yep. as well. So there's so much on this website mm-hmm. to educate. So for the women that are listening today, we brought you Catherine. It was an, an uncomfortable subject and an uncomfortable topic. Please share this podcast. Please share this website um, with other women and families and adults in your life and the children in your life as well. Catherine Lyle, thank you so much for coming into the studio today to thank share. You. And I'm really glad I was so persistent yes. to <laughs> get you on board. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thanks, Maz. You've been listening to You First. It is a show all about you and supporting you. Supporting you, putting your oxygen mask on first. We want to educate you, we want to inspire you and we want to give you the option to live a better, more joyful, more fun time. Enjoy. See you next week.